Premier League football's back, everyone's excited. I feel that when you look at the way the weekend's games have gone, I look at Arsenal being comfortable. Yesterday's game, I thought Man City were very comfortable. You know, looked fit, looked organised, some new players looking sharp. And I think overall, there were a couple talking points with VAR, but overall, I was happy with the amount that the refs let go on. I thought the refs done very well in allowing players to you know, have advantage, players that were diving, you know, um, referees weren't giving fouls for players that were diving. So I thought it was a very good weekend of football and, you know, the Premier League looks like it's getting even harder and harder. You know who surprised me in a, in a negative way? Chelsea. I just feel that, you know, the talent that they've got and I'm watching them against Manchester City and I'm seeing a team that don't look like they've been coached. I know it's early on in Maresca's reign and it's the first game of the season, but they had nothing I felt Cole Palmer was very poor um, in the way he played. I would say pluses, I would say I thought Manchester United looked better defensively. They've had a lot of negativity in Manchester United in recent years, but defensively they look strong and they've got some exciting players. But shocks, I wouldn't really say there was any shocks, to be honest. You could say maybe Everton losing 3-0 at home um, at Goodison Park. But apart from that, I felt results went um, the right way. So now, what we're all here for, this is my TalkSport Team of the Week. Excited to do this. There might be a couple of players that people are not happy with, but it's my TalkSport Team of the Week. So get used to it. So in goal, I've gone for Pope from Newcastle. I felt that Newcastle going down to 10 men so early on, you know, you only get a result out of them games and get a win if your keeper is at it. And I felt the goalkeeper was outstanding. Some of the saves he was making, you know, saves that other keepers will not make. And I feel that whatever Pope lets you down with his feet and his ball play from the back, he makes up with his shot stopping. And I've always said I want my goalkeeper to be number one at shot stopping. If he can play with the ball, it's a bonus. The first defender, I'm going to go Rico Lewis. For me, Carl Walker now is not as young as he used to be, you know, mid-30s. This is a season where I think Rico Lewis will get more football. And Nkunku, very, very good player, playing on the left-hand side. And he was quiet because of Rico Lewis. He marked him out of the game. And he was a, um, a really good threat going forward. I think he's got a very bright future. And don't be surprised if he's in future England squads this season. A very talented right back. And, you know, we have to get rid of players in early doors. We can't mess around how good they are. Uh, but for me, Pau Torres. You know, um, I was shocked in the summer that he didn't get called up for Spain. Spain went on to win it comfortably. I thought the tournament, the Euros. But... Pau Torres, he is the reason that Aston Villa play how they, they do. He receives the ball, he drifts out of that centre-half position, he's comfortable coming into midfield and making them passes into the strikers or into the wingers. He's so good on the ball that he gives us that chance to play the style of football we want to play. And also what I loved about Saturday's game was you had a front three of Antonio Gudas and Bowen and he kept them quiet. They, they normally cause teams real problems, especially Bowen. I felt like Bowen looked like he was still on holiday. He was, uh, he was that quiet. So I think Pau Torres, for me, deserves to be in the team of the week because very good on the ball and he looked aggressive in his defending. So my next defender, I um, had, to, had to really look at the games and see which defender really um, looked one of the best on the weekends. And, you know, Kwanzaa at the start, was poor for in the first half. He got subbed for Canate. But I think Van Dyke, for me, is Mr. Reliable now. You know, um, I'll, I'll talk about his pass. That pass he played to Salah, which led to the Salah goal, was outstanding. That's what he offers from that position. But he just got that presence of dealing with strong, big strikers. He's not bothered. He's got that natural um, defensive ability of knowing when to be in, where to be at the right time. And he's got the aggression and strength and to have all that with the pace, and then you can set up goals with your crossfield balls and your passing, for me, he's an outstanding defender. And he started the season off as one of the best defenders of the weekend. At left back, I've gone for Miles Kerkes. I watched the Bournemouth game, and Kerkes um, is a defender that I like. I saw him last season, looked very comfortable on the ball. I like how aggressive he is as well. You know, he likes to put in tackles, but he was flying forward, and there was. When they scored the equaliser, he was up there putting in crosses, 
very comfortable with playing in the attacking third and when needed can put in a tackle and defensive display. So he's one that goes under the radar that people might not look at because he's at a club, you'd say, small club compared to other Premier League clubs in Bournemouth. But watching him, he looks very reliable and I feel like he's going to be a very good defender going forward. Midfielder, it has to be Aston Villa again, of course. You know, um, you know how good Aston Villa are playing at the moment and this guy come in for big money from um, Everton, Onana. And for me, it's one of the best debuts I've seen in an Aston Villa shirt. Starts off after a few minutes with a great header. Yes, I, um, Antonio didn't follow him, but he made that run. He was determined to score. And it just sets you off then in your first game for a new club. You scored after three, four minutes. You know, the nervous part of your game will go. And he just built on that. You know, he was very good on the ball. He was aggressive. He's a big, big unit of a man as well. So set pieces, he was there, both ends. And also what I've noticed about Anana and what people will notice about him going forward is no offence to Sean Dyche, but when you've got a manager like Unai Emery, he's going to bring out parts of your game that you didn't think you had. You know, he's going to make Anana more comfortable receiving a ball, more comfortable with playing in risky positions. And that's what I saw in the West Ham game. For me, he was man of the match and he's an exciting player going forward. Saka on, the, on that right-hand side. Um, what I love about Saka is some players have come back, um, some of the England players have come back and there's been talk that, oh, the Man City players that play for England have had five days training. Saka doesn't care about that. You know, Saka was probably back a bit earlier um, and it just looks like he doesn't need a pre-season. You know, it just looks like he can come back, put a shirt on, and it's going to be the Saka that you've seen before the, the, um, the break. Mr. Consistent, if you look at the first goal for Havertz, that's a Saka ball. You know, cut inside, play into the, the near post area. You know one of your strikers has to be there. Mr. Reliable as well. With, we saw it in the Euros when you scored that goal. I think it was the equaliser against Switzerland. Cutting in off that right-hand side and bending it in. And what does he do this time? Mix it up. I'm not going to bend it far post. I'm going to smash it near post and then um, catch the keeper off guard. No keepers expect him to do that. But he's Mr. Reliable and for me, the first name on that Arsenal team sheet. Yes, yeah, so this was a late um, swap, um, actually. Unlucky for um, Zobberslai, but um, he lost his place in the team of the week. So um, this performance from Kovacic. I'm watching a game and I'm thinking, it looks like Chelsea have got nine men when I'm watching it. It was that easy for Kovacic to get on the ball, to always be one step ahead of the Chelsea midfield, and also some really important um, win-backs of the ball, you know, interceptions. And we might say that, that that looks easy, but he makes it easy by being so good, you know, understanding the midfield role. And what I love about Kovacic, and I was surprised that Chelsea let him go, is that he's one of the best midfielders at running with the ball as well. If you watch the way he plays... It's so comfortable. He's got that acceleration when he drops a shoulder and dribbles past players. I saw it in pre-season when he set up a goal for Jack Grealish. He ran the length of the pitch with the ball and teed it for Grealish who finished in pre-season. And yesterday, them Chelsea midfielders are thinking, oh, midfielders can do that. <laughs> Casado, Lavia and Fernandez don't do that. Kovacic is one of the midfielders that will take you on, will commit you, and he's got a goal in him as well. It was a great finish. Keeper might have um, done better, but I thought it was outstanding play from Kovacic all game, deservedly in the team of the week. And what I love about Rodgers is um, he's proving doubters wrong. When Middlesbrough sold him, Middlesbrough fans were laughing, saying Aston Villa overspent. And look who's laughing now. You know, we got a bargain because he's coming to the team with no fear. He can play off that left-hand side. He can play as a number 10. And he's just got that ability to close control, run with the ball. And watching him last season, and especially against West Ham, he was drifting into the midfield. He was picking up the ball everywhere and showing no fear, showing what probably West Ham fans were expecting of their front three. But Rodgers was getting on the ball, driving through midfield, driving through the left-hand side. And if you look at the chances he had, he will be looking back on that coach home saying, how have I not scored today? He had some really, really good chances that he has to work on and do better. If he wants to go to that next level of breaking into 
you know, international football, he's got to do better with his finishing. But apart from that, the signs of the way he can dribble with the ball, he can attack, he can commit midfields and defenders, I think is a really, really exciting transfer for Aston Villa. And what I love about that transfer was some managers would look at it and say, no, I'm a foreign manager. I look at international players. No, Unai Emery's thought, you know what? I'm going to look for any player, don't care what league they're playing in. If they're good enough in my eye, then I'm going to put them into my team. And that's what he's done. First with Rodgers and also bringing Philogene back from Hull. Yeah, so um, with, with Mo Salah, um, obviously Saka's on the right, so I'm going to put Mo Salah on the left. I had to fit him in because first half he was so quiet against Ipswich. He can do that sometimes, Mo Salah. But once Ipswich got a bit tired, second half, he tormented them. He tormented that, 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 that Ipswich defence. Um, you look at his assist, great touch to Trent and running behind. His movement was outstanding and unselfishly, which is not trademark Mo Salah, he puts it across for Jota to finish. And even his goal, great movement and determination to get in the box. Could have scored probably two more goals as well, but what I like about Mo Salah is people are writing him off and saying he's a bit older now, he's going to lose his pace and he's going to want to go to Saudi. Mo Salah just wants to score goals in the best league in the world. That's all he wants to do. He wants to score goals in the Champions League. And he started the season off like a hungry, hungry player. And another record, you know, he's gone above Rooney and Lampard to nine opening day goals, which is another record. And it's always good to score on the opening day. I remember scoring against Manchester City on the opening day of the season. I actually scored a hat-trick. Um, and the relief as a forward to get off the mark as early as possible is so important. Because when you start going five, six games without a goal as a forward, you're getting criticised, your confidence can go a bit. So for all the forward players that scored in the first game of the season, it just takes that little bit of like um, nervousness out of your game. When I look at Haaland, I didn't want to just pick my striker on like a goal. I'm not going to do that. I want to pick my players on performances. And this wasn't just about his goal. I thought his hold-up play was better. I thought that he really caused a headache for defenders. Even when he was pressing defenders, I'm seeing that from Haaland, that you, you don't really see much. But when you go to his goal, not many strikers can do this because people will look at it and think, oh, it's, a, it's an okay goal. But no, having played there, that ball comes into him. To take four touches in the penalty area is not easy. You know, there's bodies around you. And what he does well is he knows, and he looks stronger to me. He looks like he's put on a bit of muscle. He knew it was Cucurella and Fafana. He's thinking, you can't handle me. I'm going to hold you off. And if that was Nicholas Jackson, his finish would have been straight at the keeper. What does Haaland do? He knows the keeper's rushing out. Little dink. Not all strikers have got that finish. You know, Haaland has. And I think he's going to be top goal scorer again. And I think he's just a menace and... What's dangerous for the rest of the league is that he's had a full preseason. He's raring to go and looking like he's on fire. This is one that I didn't want to... Before yesterday's game, I was like, you can't pick Pep. You can't pick Pep every week. But I have to pick Pep because when I look at how they started the game, I looked at the teams and the bench and I thought, oh, hmm, Chelsea could win this. And I think... He started Doku on the right. He started Savinho, who is an outstanding talent, by the way. Wasn't working. Then what does he do as a top manager? He doesn't be stubborn and keep Doku on the right, Savinho on the left. He changes them. And that change changed the whole game. You know, we, we, we're all used to right footers off on the left and left footers off the right. And Savinho tortured Cucurella for a long part of that first 60 minutes before he got um, subbed, maybe a little bit earlier when he got subbed for Foden. But when I when I look at how Pep can tweak little things, you know, little things with the defence as well, he could have easily played Stones, he could have easily played Carl Walker, but he trusts young players like Rico Lewis. You know, he trusts these players to do what he's coached them. He trusts Savinho to come in when he had Foden, who could have started. So I really like the way um, Pep Guardiola managed this game and coached these players as well. And I think as well, Foden um, come on at half-time, didn't he, for Savinho with that injury. 
So for the first half, I thought Savinho, when he moved over to that right-hand side um, after 10 minutes, was probably close to being the player of the game in that first half. So with all that said, this is my team of the week. Agree, disagree, you always let me know anyway, so I'm looking forward to seeing it in the comments. See you next time.